In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we embark on our Advent journey, beginning with a change from Matthew to the Gospel of Mark, lighting our special candles, and pulling out this beautiful Advent blue for our vestments, I want to share with you a poem by the Reverend Gregory Birch. <clears throat> if the season of Advent were a book, I would file it on a shelf right at eye level, foremost among the great works of poetry. Advent is a poem of a bright new beginning. Advent is a love poem written to us from God. This poem of the season of Advent is set to the meter of eternity, the rhythm of our hearts, and the cadence of now. In the poem of the season of Advent, we are pregnant with Mary. We are filled with our hopes for future, our longing for love, and our trust in God. We live each day carrying within our bellies the expectation and the reality of the divine. In the poem of Advent, all words rhyme with love, even already, even not yet. In the poem of the season of Advent, every line contains hope as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Lord. Advent is a love poem written to us from God. And we already know the substance of this poem, for it is inscribed on our heart. Christ has come, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Hmm, I love that line. We are pregnant with Mary, filled with our hopes for future, our longing for love, and our trust in God. Even though our news feeds are filled with jingles to the contrary, Advent is a season of pregnant pause. Twice I have carried new life in my belly, Brendan 32 years ago, and our daughter nicknamed Kiki 31 years ago. I realize as I share this that for some of us, the idea of being pregnant is uncomfortable or unimaginable. For those who identify as male, there is simply no physical reference point. For those who have yearned for new life in this way, there may be sorrow and grief around unfulfilled dreams. And to you I say, I am so very sorry about that profound sense of loss. I want to acknowledge the complexity of the term pregnant and the complexity of the experience of Advent. Neither is one-dimensional and neither is universal. Yes, this is a season of joyful hope. And yes, this is also a season of darkness and loneliness and grief. I pray we will have compassion for one another as we live into this paradoxical time of cultural pressure to go faster and faster and faster and a spiritual invitation to slow down. Advent is a pregnant pause. When I carried Brendan and then Kiki in my womb, my body forced me to change the pace of my life. The very first indication that I might be pregnant with Brendan was when I fell sound asleep in the middle of a fabulous performance by the San Francisco Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> Making space in our small townhouse for this new being, we replaced a queen-size bed with a crib and the apparently five million things required to support a seven-pound life. Even if you have not experienced a physical pregnancy, I imagine everyone here at some point has birthed something new. A term paper, a project at work, a business endeavor, a marriage, a piece of art, a, music, uh, a piece of music. You get my point. How have you made space in your existing life 
to create room for something new that's birthing within you. What adjustments in your calendar, in your physical surroundings, in your relationships, in your way of thinking even? Depending upon the size of the endeavor, the space required can be great. Just as when Mary carried Jesus in her womb and her body physically changed to make room, the season of Advent beckons us to make space for that which God is birthing within each one of us and within the world to prepare our hearts for Christ's coming again. How challenging creating space can be when we find ourselves busy, busy, busy with really wonderful and maybe some not so wonderful pursuits. Work, childcare, caregiving for parents, buying presents, hosting parties, going to parties, the list goes on. What does making space to midwife with God look, for you, look like for you right now? Is it taking extra time in the morning to read scripture? Perhaps it could be following along in our Advent devotional living compass. Maybe on the way to work, we might turn off our podcasts or news feed and just be in silence with God for a bit. Maybe create a home altar or choosing to gift donations rather than things. Whatever it is, this making space is vital. For as the quote that is misattributed to Meister Eckhart says, what good is it if Christ was born 2,000 years ago if he is not born now in your heart? A few years ago, I, I had this wonderful opportunity to hear the theologian Gail O'Day speak to an ecumenical gathering of female ministers. Dr. O'Day focused on the meaning of Advent. And in this, she said, in Advent, we are to look, receive, and act and embody the incarnate love of God. The work of Advent, according to scripture, is to look, to keep awake, to look, where is God already breaking in, in unexpected ways and in unexpected places? Our gospel reading today and many of the readings of Advent are apocalyptic in nature. As you may know, apocalypse means unveiling. O'Day says, as we, take, we are to take our blinders off <clears throat> and notice the famines, the floods, the earthquakes, the wars. We are to notice, to keep awake, to the suffering in our midst, to the pain we have caused one another, and that we are causing to our home, the earth. We are to keep awake in this special time, in a special way, looking at our lives through the eyes of God as best we can. This has me wondering if Advent is a love poem to us from God, as Greg Birch's poem would have us believe, could a stanza of God's poem be, keep awake in love and notice? where I am calling you to stay with the pain and help me midwife new life. We don't often think of the darkness in the world as a part of our preparation for Christ's coming, and yet it is that very darkness that makes us require Christ's light. Some people take the apocalyptic literature of our scripture to be interpreted literally. That is not the purpose. One of the purposes of apocalyptic literature is to give us God's perspective on what is happening right here, right now. O'Day claims, if wars are important to the second coming, when was there a day when there were not wars? We are always to keep awake. Awake to the inhumanity of how we treat one another, what would the birth pangs of new life look like right now? I am wondering, where is God inviting us to create compassionate responses in our homes, in our churches, in our communities, in the world? 
Are you wondering that too? If so, it is important for us to take time and listen and discern and hope. And for us to listen and discern and hope and to respond. Advent means coming. It literally points to the parousia, the second coming of Christ. We are to be on the lookout and travel light. Advent is a time for us to bless and release those things which no longer serve God's purposes today. Let's face it, that can be hard. Some of us are hardwired to hold on to everything, but really let's trust that God, that, that God is with us because the truth is we only have so much time, so much energy, and so many resources. God loves us so much. God doesn't want us to waste our precious life missing our chance to be a midwife to the new God is creating in this time, in this place. We are pregnant with Mary, filled with our hopes for future, our longing for love and our trust in God. Advent, Advent reminds us that our waiting, our hoping, our longing is, something, is for something greater than our own well-being, as important as that is. God desires our being made whole in Christ so we can live out our Christian mission to wait, hope, long, and strive for the bright beginning and the well-being of all. Along with John and Catherine, CJ and Ron, all of your clergy, I invite you to a holy advent, one that can make room for prayer, for noticing the suffering in the world, for noticing the joy and beauty in the world, for grace, for hope, for peace, for compassion. Because truly, what good is it if Christ was born 2,000 years ago, if he is not born now in our hearts? In closing, I'd like to pray an Advent blessing for us. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, I ask your blessing upon these, your people, as we enter into a holy Advent. Give us the grace to say no to that which does not serve your purposes and a joyful yes to that which does. May we look with compassion upon your world as we wait in joyful hope for your coming again in great glory. Amen. Amen.